Well hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I think it's about time I gave you an update on where I've got to with the RS style spoiler project for the Fiesta. So I've got to the point where all the parts are now manufactured and the prototype is ready. I'm now working on transferring those prototypes into moulds so I'm able to produce them at a higher quality and at a higher quantity. So what you can see here is one of the vertical strakes. I now need to split the mould and trim it and extract the parts. So this is the upper spoiler um, with a nice coat of a gloss resin on the top. The next stage is to apply a mould release agent. In this case I've got a, a blue PVA which I'm putting over the top. Uh, that then dries to a, a glossy haze and now I have to build the mould itself. So around the perimeter of the part I'm using a polypropylene sheet uh, which I've cut with a jigsaw to roughly follow the contours. I'm then using some household insulation and this is a, a polyurethane foam which I'm hand cutting and sanding to give some support to that plastic running around the perimeter of the part. I'm also using some mould release tape you can see here uh, to build up a bridge so that I'm able to uh, attach the mould onto the table and put it away later. So here are the first parts of the mould coming together around that upper spoiler to build the perimeter. I'll then need to go around and seal those down, fill any gaps up with a wax and then to take that top mould. So here's the leading edge parts going on and the sides. Clearly I'm going to have to do some work to fill gaps and this is where the skill and the time and the effort really comes in. So I've been using a mixture of uh, plasticine and a yellow wax uh, to fill all the gaps and then running around that with a tool to clean it all up. So we'll see it's starting to come together on the top surface now. That gets coated with gel coat. And that's left to cure for probably four to six hours. And then a very fine tissue is applied over the top. And I'm using a stippling motion with a brush to drive out all the air bubbles. That first coat of very thin glass fibre is really important to reinforce the moulds. Any air bubbles you have will probably lead to the gel coat coming away when you use the mould later. So it's worth investing extra time. Of meticulous stippling here to make sure all the air bubbles are pushed out on that first layer. Now I'm using a roller to move all the air bubbles out of the following layers that go on. This is a much thicker chop strand mat at this point, it's adding the rigidity to the mould and the strength. But that coupling coat that was put on the thin tissue is there to make sure you've got that nice connection between these thicker layers and the more fragile gel coat underneath, which makes the surface of the mould you're going to use later. So time taken at this stage is really well invested because it will lead to a much higher quality mould later. So once that's cured, the challenge is then to be able to release that and pull it away from the table and remove all of the mould flange supports and other pieces so you can go and get to the part. So it looks like that's come away nicely, made a bit of a mess of my table ripping up all the paper I put down but hey, that's life. So let's take a look at this thing, peeling off those edges. Mold release is doing its job very nicely there. And that black perimeter you see around the part will effectively be the flange of the mold once the other side has been laid up onto it. So now that inner surface of course will need to be prepped with a mold release uh, ready for the second side of the mold to be finished off. and all the wax now being removed with the edge of a wooden stirrer stick to get a nice crisp edge between the mould and the flange. That can be reused for later on other projects. It's quite a satisfying process actually chasing the wax around the outside of the part. So again, investing extra time at this point to make sure it's as clean as possible. The next step is to put in some bolt holes and to trim the part. So extracting all the dust away from the holes there so they're all around the perimeter on the outside of the mould flanges ready for clamping the part together later once it's been laid up with glass fibre. And now using the Dremel and the trusty Dyson vacuum cleaner to extract all the dust 
you really don't want to be breathing this kind of thing in so make sure you have a mask if you're trying to do your own project like this and a pair of gloves and goggles as well so now just running around the outside with that diamond disc and just trimming everything back the nice thing about using the diamond disc on this rather than a traditional cutting wheel is you actually get quite a smooth edge to the part so it's not going to cut your fingers when you handle it later with splinters and other sharp edges and discarding the flanges you can see finished mold coming together the next challenge is going to be splitting those two layers the trick is to look for that little hairline crack between the two layers of gel coat on the upper and lower surface and to drive in a chisel then I've got some cheap 3d printed wedges which I'm then tapping in and chasing that crack all the way around the perimeter of the part. It's like watching a first person shooter. So we're now banging those wedges in, chasing that crack now along the leading edge of the mold. Due to the complex curvature of that spoiler, it does take a little bit of extra effort to pull the parts open, but once you have, it's ready to rock and roll. Now we're moving on to the lower spoiler, Again, this has had a coat of that XCR surface resin to make it nice and glossy, ready for taking a mould. Exactly the same process, so I'm using the polypropylene sheet to build up a perimeter around the outside of the lower mould, but I've had to build up quite a lot more additional thickness to help manage the transition between the tabletop and the part to make that first mould. Here's that tissue coat where I've been round and meticulously chased out all the air bubbles. That's left for a few hours and then the thicker coat of chop strand mat goes on to give the strength and then I'll be rolling that out shortly. So here's the mould now outside, curing a little bit of sunshine when we do get it in the UK. And now after the trimming process we're wedging that apart but unfortunately, I managed to break the buck underneath you know, that prototype part on my lower spoiler, lovingly handcrafted and now destroyed with a moment of uh, accidental handling. <laughs> so you can actually see on the surface, there's still a lot of the mold release agent left inside the mold. So that will need to be scrubbed away and cleaned up. So the first step, this is largely water soluble stuff actually, is leave it just soaking with a bit of water and to enjoy some gratuitous slow motion replays. So all those yellow regions are wax which are still retained in some of the surface pores of the mould. So I'll be going around with some washing up liquid and a scrubbing brush to try and get the worst of those off. But of course before I, I use this in anger to make production parts, I'm really looking forward to sharing those next steps with you. So I'm going to be going on to sanding and finishing the moulds, polishing them up to a mirror surface finish and applying a first few coats of mould release agent ready to take a production part. So all the parts have had a good wash, and now just rinsing away as much of that residue as I can. So there's a lot of time and effort that goes into manufacturing these parts. It's probably around 60 man hours have gone into making the moulds. I've had to fit that in around a full-time job and family life outside of work. So hopefully sharing the rest of this journey with you in the year. Thanks very much for watching, but for now, engineer out.